This video purports to show fighters from the paramilitary rapid support forces at the presidential palace in Khartoum. It's the office of the head of the army, General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan, but the RSF says it's in control of this government building. There's been more intense fighting in the capital as the two sides battle for control. That's despite the announcement of an extension of a ceasefire for one week after mediation efforts by South Sudan's president, Salva Kiir. Looting is still a problem. In Bakri, in the northern part of Khartoum, thieves have stolen clothes and textiles from every store at this market. The UN says the deteriorating situation is making it difficult to deliver aid. Its humanitarian chief, who visited Port Sudan, says security guarantees are needed. So if you are someone who is keen on following every single thing that goes on in Africa, then you must have came across the incident that is currently going on in Sudan. And uh, you must have had the same thought like I do. Isn't this Libya in the making? Because it's the same thing that started in Libya. The whole case in Sudan right now is making many people, many Pan-Africanists like myself, begins to wonder, haven't we learned anything throughout history? Why do we keep on making these same mistakes again and again and again? Why do we have to fight each other all the time? Why can't we simply handle situations in a way that it doesn't destroy the whole country? Do we like seeing people suffering? Do we like seeing everything we've worked throughout the years, everything we've built throughout the years, everything we've suffered to have throughout the years being destroyed because of simple disagreement? When Omar El Bashi was ruling Sudan, he did that with an iron fist. He punished anyone who said anything that wasn't in line with what he had in mind. And the people rose up against him and they finally took him out. And when this happened, I personally was really, really happy because I thought that for once, the Sudanese people are now going to enjoy the freedom and liberty they do deserve. I was so happy about this new development. But do you know what happened? To my greatest surprise, even the next general who took over became an authoritarian. He never wanted to leave power. He never wanted to do what he promised he was going to do. And look at what we are now facing in Sudan. You see, two major fractions of the military are fighting against each other. No one is willing to compromise. No one is willing to put the people first. No one even care about the common person in the street. And this has always been the problem in Africa. Sometimes I really do not understand why things in other places are done differently. But when it gets to Africa, it becomes a totally different thing. Sometimes you would really sit and wonder why African leaders, not all of them, but most of them are the way they are. Before they get into office, they will make a lot of promises. But when they get into office, when they taste the sweetness of power, they are not willing to leave. They are not willing to give it to the next person. They are not willing to listen to any 
opposition. Power in Africa is a very funny thing. And we, the Africans, we need to ask ourselves the difficult question. Where are we headed? If we take one step forward and three steps backward, where are we headed? Two major fractions of the military fighting each other for power. The people caught in between. Where are we headed? We must ask ourselves this question. Okay. And when this is going on, do you know who benefits the most? The West. They love stuff like this. Now, they would say they want to send aid and uh, they want to help us. But do you know what, what other thing they are helping us with? Arms and ammunition. They are selling their weapons. We are buying it from them. And they are making a lot of money while we are suffering. And before we know it, it will be like Libya, where it is total chaos and anarchy. We Africans must learn from history. We Africans must always put Africa first. We Africans shouldn't let power corrupt us. We Africans must not always make situations get so difficult that we have to fight each other. And in case there is anything that we have to resolve, we Africans must learn to go on a negotiating table and negotiate. Because no matter what we do, no matter how long we keep on fighting each other, we are only going to end up on the negotiating table to negotiate for peace. My heart goes out to the people of Sudan. I can only but imagine their pain and suffering. I hope that we, the African people, especially the AU, will now rise up and take charge of this situation. That the AU will now carry out its responsibility. That the AU will step up and do what it is supposed to do. This is an African crisis. The AU should be at the forefront of this crisis. So to you guys, my brothers and sisters in Africa and from Africa, what do you think about this current crisis in Sudan? Could it all be avoided? And what can we, the African people, learn from this crisis in Sudan? Let us know in the comment section below because like always, we love hearing your thoughts and opinions on the stories that concerns us the most. And please do not forget to like this video, share this video, follow our Facebook page, and most importantly, subscribe to this channel because little did of good we, like the one you are doing just now, help us a lot, and we shall forever be grateful to you. So thank you very much for doing just that.